Welcome to Chem Exam Explained, where the aim is chemistry clarity, exam mastery. In this video, we will be looking at Cape Chemistry 2022, Unit 2, Paper 2, Module 1. Let's begin. Question 1. Figure 1 represents a diagram of a reaction scheme. If you look at A, you'll see that it is an aldehyde going to a hydroxy nitrile. That's A to B. Going from A to C, you're going from an aldehyde to a carboxylic acid. So looking at the diagram of the reaction scheme, we can now answer the questions. 1A. State the reagents and conditions for each of the following reactions. Part 1. From A to B. Now again, looking at a to B, you're going from an aldehyde to a hydroxy nitrile. So the reagents required is sodium cyanide or potassium cyanide with HCl. That reaction would produce HCN. The condition required is reflux in alkaline solution. Part 2. A to C. This is going from an aldehyde to a carboxylic acid. Reagents required a mild oxidizing agent like acidified potassium dichromate. Condition under reflux. Part 3. Draw the displayed structures and provide names for each of the following compounds. Compound D. Now, if you look at compound C, you have a carboxylic acid. Now you have thionyl chloride reacting with it. So this is an acylating agent. So you're going to form an acyl chloride. So this is where the carboxylic acid group, specifically the OH group, will be replaced by a Cl group. So you'll go from carboxylic acid to an acyl chloride. So that's C double bond O, Cl. And so you'll see that the structure that we draw is no longer propanoic acid, but propanoyl chloride. Compound E. Let's go back again and have a look at the structure. So you'll notice that you have your acyl chloride that we just formed for compound D. Now we are reacting that acyl chloride with ethanol in triethylamine, and we're going to form an ester. Now in forming the ester, we would start with our acyl chloride, propanoyl chloride, and we react that with ethanol. And you'll see where we remove HCl, then forming our ester. Hence, ethyl propanoate. So compound E is ethyl propanoate. Part B. Consider the equation below, which shows the dissociation of chloroethanoic acid in water. Here we have chloroethanoic acid plus water, and it dissociates. B part one, write an expression for the Ka of chloroethanoic acid. So the Ka expression or equation is simply writing the product of the product over the product of the reactant without including water in this equation. B, part two, write the expression to show how pKa is derived from Ka. So the expression to show how pKa is derived from Ka is pKa equal minus log base 10 Ka. Part C, table one shows the compounds and the pKa values. Now, if you look at the table, you'll notice that going from ethanoic acid to 
chloroethanoic acid to dichloroethanoic acid and trichloroethanoic acid, you'll notice that the pKa value is decreasing. Now, if you know anything about Ka, you'll know that Ka deals with acid dissociation. All right? So the higher the Ka, the greater the acidity. The lower the Ka, the lower the acidity. But if you flip that now and use pKa instead of Ka, then it is the opposite. The lower the pKa value, the more acidic the acid. And therefore, a greater dissociation should be expected. So looking at part C1, complete table one above by correctly inserting the pKa value of each compound from the following list of values, 1.48, 0 0.70, 4.76, and 2.86. So starting with the weakest acid would be 4.76, then 2.86, then 1.48, and the strongest acid would have the lowest pKa of 0 0.70. So C part two, give reasons for your assignment in C part one. Let's look at the answer now for C part one. So pKa is a measure of the strength of the acid. The lower the pKa value, the stronger the acid. This means that the reaction becomes more product favored because if you're dissociating, then you are more product favored than reactant favored. So equilibrium position will shift to the right. Looking at the dissociation between the ethanoic acid and water, you'll see that you form the ethanoate ion and H plus ion. So that is the carboxylate ion. Now, carboxylate ion is relatively stable due to the conjugative effect. And this is why this carboxylic acid, ethanoic acid, has the lowest acidity, hence the highest pKa. The acid strength of carboxylic acid increases if the carbon next to the carboxylic acid group has electron withdrawing atoms bonded to it. And this is due to the inductive effect. So if you look at the diagram here, you'll see that this carbon has attached to it one chlorine, with, which is a withdrawing group. So if you have another withdrawing group attached, then you realize that it is becoming more acidic. Hence, the pK value is decreasing. This one with three withdrawing groups has the highest acidity, hence the lowest pKa value. Part D, account for the fact that the pKb of phenylamine is greater than that of ethylamine. Now, we just looked at pKa and Ka. Now, you must note that the lower the pKb, the stronger the base. Now, look at the diagram here. Within this structure, you'll see that we have the two electrons on the nitrogen. These electrons will be delocalized into the ring. Okay? So, due to the conjugative effect, the lone pair of electron on nitrogen is delocalized when the delocalized electrons in the aromatic ring, making it less available for the H plus ion, thus higher pKb. If you look at this structure, this amine, one, two, so it's ethyl amine, is a stronger base due to the electron pushing ethyl group, which has a positive inductive effect. So this increases the electron density on the nitrogen, making it more available for the H plus ion, thus lower pKb. So when it comes to base strength, you are looking at the availability of the lone pair. In the first structure, the lone pair is not so readily available, while in the second structure, the lone pair is readily available. Hence, the one where the lone pair is more available, that one would be the stronger base. Part E. Figure two shows the repeating units of two polymers, P and Q. So if you examine P, you examine Q, you'll notice something right away. Now, polymer P 
is an addition polymer, while polymer Q is a condensation polymer. So let's look at the question. Part E1. Draw the structures of the monomer used to form polymer P and name the type of polymerization involved. So if you have a polymer that is an addition polymer and they ask you to draw the monomer, all you have to do is find the repeating unit and add a double bond. And this is the structure for your answer. And the type of polymerization is addition polymerization. E part two. Draw the structures of the two compounds which react to form the polymer Q and name the type of polymerization involved. Now, if you look back at the structure, it's always important to look back at the structure. You'll see that we have this repeating unit. Okay. So it's a diol and a diacid. And we remove water from the, the molecule. So if you go back to the question, you'll see that this is the diol and this is the diacid. So to give you a better view of what is happening, So we are going to be removing a molecule of water. So from here, we always remove OH from the acid group and H from the alcohol group. That is minus H2O. We remove this OH and this H that is also removing water. And then we join them. And so if we do that to join them, then we form the polymer, which is the condensation polymer. So if you look back at your structure now, you'll see that the, if you separate that polymer, you, you got back a diol and a diacid. And this type of polymerization is condensation. Part three, identify a compound which in aqueous solution will break down the polymer Q, but not polymer P. So pretty much we're looking at an alkali sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide. And this is called alkaline hydrolysis. Alkaline hydrolysis is able to break up a condensation polymer, but not an addition polymer. This is the end of module one, 2022.